This is My Child Will Thrive, and I'm your host, Tara Hunkin, nutritional therapy practitioner, certified GAPS practitioner, restorative wellness practitioner, and mother. I'm thrilled to share with you the latest information, tips, resources, and tools to help you on the path to recovery for your child with ADHD, autism, sensory processing disorder, or learning disabilities. My own experiences with my daughter, combined with as much training as I can get my hands on, research I can dig into, and conferences I can attend, have helped me to develop systems and tools for parents like you who feel overwhelmed trying to help their children. So sit back as I share another great topic to help you on your journey. A quick disclaimer before we get started. My Child Will Thrive is not a substitute for working with a qualified healthcare practitioner. The information provided on this podcast is not intended to diagnose or treat your child. Please consult your healthcare practitioner before implementing any information or treatments that you have learned about on this podcast. There are many gifted, passionate, and knowledgeable practitioners with hundreds if not thousands of hours of study and clinical experience available to help guide you. Part of our goal is to give you the knowledge and tools you'll need to effectively advocate for your child so that you don't blindly implement each new treatment that comes along. No one knows your child better than you. No one knows your child's history like you do or can better judge what is normal or abnormal for your child. The greatest success in recovery comes from the parent being informed and asking the right questions and making the best decisions for their child in coordination with a team of qualified practitioners in different areas of specialty. Today's podcast is sponsored by the Autism, ADHD, and Sensory Processing Disorder Summit. In order to learn more about the summit and to sign up for free, please go to www.mychildwillthrive.com forward slash summit. Hi, welcome back to the My Child Will Thrive podcast. I'm Tara Hunkin, and I am really excited to bring to you an interview I did with my friend and colleague, Jessica Sherman. Jess is going to walk you through her approach with her clients for how to get a fresh start, especially since all we've been through in the last couple of years, um, a lot of us are feeling overwhelmed and we may have fallen off our plans with our children or things have changed for them with everything that's happened in the last couple of years. So this is your opportunity to take a step back and come up with a new plan or uh, a new vision for your child to thrive. I also want to invite you to join me for a planning workshop that I'm doing this January. You can find a link in the show notes. You can join me where I walk you through my framework for how to figure out where the next best place is to start with your child. And also I'll walk you through all the free tools we have here at My Child Will Thrive uh, so that you can get a kickstart to your new year too. So without further ado, let's get into the podcast with Jessica Sherman. Hi, everyone. I want to welcome you back to the My Child Will Thrive podcast. I am really excited to have with me today uh, my friend and colleague, Jess Sherman. Jess has been on the podcast before. She's been a guest on the summit as well. And I keep bringing Jess back because um, she has a depth of experience. Um, Jess helps kids thrive and families connect. And along with being a certified teacher, which is... um, really important to have that perspective as a teacher. She's an author, a speaker, and a mother, and she's a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, board certified in practical holistic nutrition, and she's written a book, Raising Resilience, um, along with her coaching programs. She's been guiding worried parents of children with learning differences, anxiety, ADHD, ASD, and mood disorders towards safe and effective tools to help them reduce Uh, reliance on medication and set their kids up for a bright future. So we are always happy to have you back on the podcast. So thanks for joining me here today, Jess. Yeah. Thanks for having me back again. It's always a pleasure. Yeah. So when this, we're we're recording this before uh, the end of 2021, but when this airs, we are going to be fresh into the new year. And I asked you if you would come on today to talk with me about 
how we as parents, or not everybody, but some people have the idea of having a, a New Year's resolutions, but with our kids, really, I think, especially after the last couple of years we've had, we're just looking for a fresh start. And sometimes we need that reset. So what I wanted to talk to you and uh, get your insights on today is how you help people plan um, for what, where to start if they want to start fresh, because sometimes we get off track and that's happens to all of us at the best of times, but we need tools and systems and a thought process to get us through to start fresh again. Yeah. It's a nice, big, juicy topic. And I'll tell you an experience that I had about maybe, a, maybe more like a year and a half ago is that I started I started taking my clients through a vision mapping process and partly I, I started doing this because I did it myself, right? Just as a business person, as a, as a person, as a human, um, I was asked, you know, what do you want their next three years to look like? And I got really interested in this idea of creating the life that you want versus, you know, having something imposed on you. And I, and I just, I, I sat with that and I, I, you know, noodled it around for a little while and, and, um, and it's talked about a lot in entrepreneurial circles, right. Designing your life and making decisions based on your values and your objectives and things like that. And I started to think, wow, you know, that's very much applicable to running a family, running a family can, you can think about it a little bit like running a business in that you want to have vision, you want to make conscious choices to, to take you towards that vision. You want, you, th there are some things that you're, you're going to have some gaps in your knowledge where you're going to have to call in support and, and, and a team. It's very hard to, to do anything by yourself um, as a business person and as a parent. So I started to see all of these, all of these parallels. And I was like, wow, I should be, I should be vision mapping with my clients. And so I built that into our, what I call our resilience roadmap, which is our, 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 our process that I take parents through at the very beginning, I asked them to map out their vision. And it's a really, really powerful tool um, because stuff gets hard, right? Any, any change, any process of change, we literally like, we really have a physiological aversion to change. It's, it's a really fascinating once you start to understand how the nervous system works and you know, how our brains work, like our, our brains are, and, and our nervous systems are, are kind of programmed for status quo, right? They just kind of, they want, they want slow and steady and consistent. And if you want to, if you want to change something, your nervous system starts to kick in all of these hormones to like say, well, no, 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 no stay the course, go straight. And it takes a ton of energy to deviate. Right. And, 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 and an easy example would be something like exercise, right? If like, you know, you want to get healthy and you want to lose weight and you want to be strong and you want to go to exercise. But if it's not part of your routine, you will come up with all kinds of excuses as to why you can't, right? Because it takes a lot of energy to just change your, um, your day and your, your, your priorities and your thought patterns to include it. And then once you've, once you've done that, then, then it becomes a whole lot easier, but having your vision of what you want life to look like is going to become really handy when stuff gets hard. And when your nervous system kicks in and says, uh, -uh no, no status quo, it's too hard to go over there. We're going to stay over here. You know, you got to stick to that vision. So that's what I have. That's, that's sort of maybe my first suggestion is to, to, to not only think it through, but write it down. What do you want your life to feel like, look like? Um, some of the questions that I ask my families to think through is like, what, what do you want your relationship with your child to feel like? What do you want your days to look like and feel like? And here's, here's a really important key to this. And you'll hear, you'll hear this a lot out in the, in the world of, of vision. If you, have, if you dive into that world, if, when you write this down and you articulate it, you've got to write it in first person as if it's already happening. And we won't 
maybe get into the neuroscience of it, but if you write it and you think about it as if it's happening. So my child uh, makes it through their day at school without needing to go to the office and call home because they have a tummy ache. Um, I don't get phone calls home. We sit as a family and eat together and everyone is pleasant, like whatever it is for you, um, as if it's already happening. Yeah, no, I, I love the idea um, of vision and I've, I've always um, doing things, but also I know for myself when my kids were younger and we were embarking on some massive change in terms of how we did things when we really started to dig into a lot of the things that we, we, we did that made all the, the, the difference, which were really hard to do at the time. I also reflected on how what would be harder? Is it harder? Is it going to be harder to make that change? Or is it going to be harder to live the life that we are living right now, where, you know, my child is uncomfortable in their own skin, you know, can't even put a sock on without it, it being a, a huge challenge? Or, or whatever the challenge that you're seeing in your child can be. So it's a combination of two. I, I mean, obviously, I love your that that's sort of the the reverse of what you were saying, but but it is in the, in the same, which is that life like this is not living, it's not thriving. Um, so we're going to need to make that change so that we can have that vision like you just had them describe. And I love the fact that you have them them write it down. I think it's well, really and, effective. And here's an interesting part of that. When you write, when you think about your vision and you write it, a, a lot of uh, what I've noticed is that a lot of parents get very triggered and they get very, um, the guilt comes in, the shame comes in, the, this is never going to happen voices come in the, this isn't possible voices come in the, oh, it's just because they have their diagnosis. Why me? Like all of these sorts of voices start to come in. And I'm always, I'm constantly telling my clients <laughs> so ad nauseum, like, just get curious, just notice them get curious. They are a part of us. They are a, like, you know, all of these voices, um, like there's no shame in them. They, they are part of you. Um, but noticing them, getting curious, saying, hmm, thank you for showing up. Thank you. Doubt. I don't need you right now. <laughs> uh, let's, let's have a chat later, you know, and, um, and, and just, just notice what, what triggers you and you don't have to know how you're going to achieve your vision. If you knew how you were going to achieve that, you would already be there right? So yes, it's going to be hard. Any process of change is hard. Just like what, what you were saying, um, it, 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 not embrace it, but just acknowledge that, you know, change is difficult. You don't know how you're going to get there. That's okay. This is just an exercise in articulating what it is that you want. Mm -hmm. Because if you, if you know what you want and you can articulate it, then you can start to fill the pieces in as to, well, maybe we should talk about that next. Like what, what do I know? What do I need to know more about or what strategies or skills do I need in order to make this happen? Because mm -hmm. yeah. you don't have to know all that stuff in order to create a vision. Yeah. So it's interesting. One of the things that you were saying about doubt, um, uh, BJ Fogg, who is the author of Tiny Habits, but he's a Stanford pro professor who is the world renowned for his, um, his knowledge and his research into behavior change. And um, he presented at a conference I was at once where he was just talking about in order to, to, to change your habits or behaviors, um, you have to hope, have hope. And one of the things I think that a lot of us parents that are struggling with children that have these diagnoses or all these symptoms is is the hope we we sometimes we lose hope that they that things can change, so it is really important to build a vision, um, to have that hope, and then we'll figure out how to make that happen or how to make some version of that happen through um, further steps. So, yeah, I think that's important. Some version of that, mm -hmm. right? Because things things change, and I mean, this is also taken right from the world of of business, right? It's like you can have a three-year vision, 
And you also need to be open to opportunity and change and, and flexibility in terms of, you know, some of those pieces. So yeah, that's, that's important. I like that. So when people are doing this, do you think it helps, and you touched on this a little bit, but helps to reflect back on the past or, or only to look forward? Yeah, that's a really important question. It's a good question. I think about it this way. The, the only reason to look back is to understand how you got here. And the only reason to do that is so that you can make choices for what your next move is going to be. Right. So I think, I think we spend a lot of time looking back and, and then those same voices, the doubt, the shame, the, I wish I had the, I, how come I didn't know? How come nobody told me like all of the voices start to come in, acknowledge them. They are there. There's just, you know, you can't really shut them up because they, they are present. Um, but they're not just, I mean, consider if they're helpful to you or not. If they're helpful, you know, maybe, maybe you listen and you have a chat with them, but if they're not helpful in helping you find your next move, then you don't need them right now. Right. Mm -hmm. So like an, an example would be if you look back and you notice you have a history of antibiotic use and multiple infections and wow, we were in and out of the hospital, you know, so many times up to age five, that's important information because now if you're dealing with any kind of immune dysfunction or chronic constipation or gut issues or neurological issues or whatever you're dealing with now, it, it may have been partly triggered by that. So we now know that our next move is going to be something to do with assessing the gut microbiome or doing some sort of, you know, digestive work, because we know that antibiotics really, really do a number on the, on the, on the gut ecosystem and how we know a lot about, you know, the, the far reaching effects of that. So that's an example. You look back in order to understand how you got here so that you can take your next step. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense to me. And we do talk a lot about that here in terms of gathering that data. It's really, it's really about data points as opposed to in order to help you find those root causes, as opposed to, like you said, it's no point, there's no point to um, saying, I wish I could have, should have, I mean, we've all, we all do that, but it yeah. doesn't, doesn't, and it'll, doesn't and it'll help happen. I mean, I think we also spend a whole lot of time like trying to just, oh, I wish I, I wish I didn't feel this way or I wish it whatever. And, and I really, over the last year kind of settled into this idea that, you know, whatever voice comes into my head is there for a reason. And it's a part of me. There's a section, there's a, there's a, there's a guilt ridden mom in me that wishes I had done things differently. And it, it's not, it's for me to, for, for current me to get into a fight with, with the, the guilt me again, it's like, it's, it's almost like it's, it's, it's not hel a helpful place to put my energy, but it feels a whole lot better to say, Oh, hello guilt. Thanks for coming. Thanks for showing up. I'm sure you serve a purpose, but right now I don't need you. And, and then move on for, for me as a mom, like that is such a more pleasant way to live my day, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Acknowledge and, and shoo, yeah. shoo away. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it's, a, it's actually a helpful skill. You could teach your, your kids that too, right? If they have high anxiety and you're trying to figure out why it, it changes the dynamic between, Oh, we got to fix you because you're, you're anxious. So, you know, in, in our world, we look into the gut and we look into the neurotransmitters and we, you know, we try to tinker in there, but it, it there's a whole nother angle to this to say, you know, you're a highly anxious, very sensitive, empathetic person. And there are, there are superpowers in there. We have to make sure that those superpowers don't, you know, get in your way of living a, a productive, happy life. But, um, you know, this anxiety that, that bubbles up in you every time you want to do something new is a part of you. And maybe we need to have a conversation with it and say, thanks for showing up and trying to keep me safe from a new opportunity, but I'm actually going to, going to do this opportunity, take this, take this on. It's just yeah. a different way of looking at it. Yeah. I mean, the mindset around these things is incredibly important for both us and our kids. So 
when we're getting this fresh start, uh, so let's say we're taking a fresh start and go, okay, what happened in the past happened in the past, I'm ready to move forward. How do you recommend parents determine where they should start, what that first step should be? Yeah. So after you've done your vision, share your vision with whoever is involved in your parenting, your parenting partner or your parents, if their you know, grandparents are involved or whoever is in your child's immediate sphere of influence, um, share it with them. And um, that that's a whole conversation <laughs> in and of itself, right? How do you share that? But um, I do actually have some stuff on my blog around having conversations with people who really don't understand what you're doing. Um, so maybe that's a resource we can link people to. Uh, so, but after you've done that, then the next thing to think about is like, okay, so where, where do I need some support? Like, where should I focus my energy to, if, if I hear it, I'm here and I want to get here, what's in the middle. Um, this is where a lot of people either, either try to figure it out themselves or, you know, they join a group like yours or they, or they hire a coach like me or some, something to to guide them from point A to point B, right? Because it's messy in there. Um, and I like, I really like frameworks because if you're gonna, if you're gonna try to make your way through this mess, whether you have a guide or not, you need a framework. Otherwise you're just gonna like spin around and tumble and I don't, it, get, it gets, it gets uh, inefficient. Let's call it that. <laughs> so I'll offer you a couple of frameworks and people can kind of take them if they, if they resonate. Does that sound good? Sound okay? Sounds perfect. So I have found we got to be efficient with our time and our energy, right? So we want big bang for our buck. So there are three things. I call them the, the trifecta for resilient health that we focus on in our coaching, but we all, we always kind of wrap around. We're like, okay, let's work on this one. Now this one, this, cause you can't do all three at once usually. But you can choose one, assess how they're doing and decide if you want to focus there. So the three of them are eating. So that would be like the picky eating, the, the family meals, like how is the stress and the pressure meal planning? Um, is your child, like, do you even know whether your child is getting sufficient nutrition? Do you know, um, what that looks like, what that means. Do you know what a balanced plate should be? Can you look at a recipe and decide whether it's nutritionally balanced? So anything to do with eating. The second piece is sleeping. Is your child sleeping? Are they able to fall asleep, stay asleep? Are there nightmares? Are they waking up feeling well-rested? Is, is nighttime a battle? I see this a lot, right? Does your child just get revved up at night and they just start spinning and you can't get them to sleep? That's the second bucket. And then the third is pooping. Is there constipation, diarrhea, belly pain, withholding, those sorts of things. So the reason I think, I think of these three buckets, eating, sleeping, and pooping, is because if there, is, if there are issues in those three things, the, the, there's massive trickle down effect, right? So like, it's like we're working at the headwaters instead of chasing symptoms all the time. Like, why is there anxiety? Why, why is there explosive behavior? La, la, la. Let's go, let's work upstream at the headwaters. Are they eating? Are they sleeping? Are they pooping? And so as you listen to this, you can think through like, well, where are your, where are the holes? right? Where are the major like red flags? Might be in all three, but the first, the first kind of stage of this fresh start is just assessing where you're at. Be like, yeah, last year we worked on pooping and we got that. That's awesome. Now we're going to work on bedtime, you know, or what, whatever it is. So that, that's one framework that I, I can, I can offer. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. And it's nice to have it um, simplified and 
people that are listening that are familiar with um, our free toolkit, we have a food, mood, sleep, and poop journal uh, that we should be tracking that data in in order to figure out how these things interconnect. So I think yeah. it, it's a great place. And I love just the simplicity of the three things that you're focusing on. Well, and like on. you, like you just said, like they do interconnect and there's lots of complicated physiology and there's tests you can do. And there's, you know, all kinds of strategies underneath all of those things. Mm -hmm. But the reason I like it as a framework is because like you can, you can listen to a webinar or a summit or have a consultation with a doctor or, you know, all of the things that I know everybody's always in information gathering zone, right? Of just like, I need more information. Why this? Why that? And then, and then it's kind of like you're throwing spaghetti at the fridge, right? If people, mm -hmm. I don't know if people do that anymore, but it's like, see what sticks. Be like, yeah, okay, we're trying this. Okay. Now we're going to try this. And now we're going to try this. And I find it helpful to have these buckets because you can, you can then, you know, have your experiences and, and gather your knowledge and try to fit them into one of those three buckets. And some of the strategies you're going to want to bench. You're going to be like, okay, I know we should be turning Wi-Fi off at night. And I know that we got to get the computers out of the, out of the room and all this stuff. But right now that just feels undoable. So we're going to put that in this bucket and we're not going to do anything about it just yet, but we're going to come back to it because right now the main issue is we got to get this kid pooping, right? So, you know, you can't do it all at the same time. You got to work through things systematically. Well, it's funny that you say that because I was going to ask the question, <laughs> do you suggest diving all in or taking it baby steps? And I guess I think I know your answer. <laughs> well, the answer really is that it depends on how much bandwidth you have. Right. Because what I don't want you to do and what parents do all the time is burn themselves out. Right. And then your own anxiety goes up and your own panic goes up. And guys, like we co-regulate with our kids. If we are trying to help our children live a more relaxed, calm, focused life so that they can develop to their fullest capacity, we need to find some balance in ourselves. <laughs> And you will not find that kind of balance if you try to do it all. You'll just, you'll just make yourself, you know, you'll work yourself up into a tizzy. So that's where it's really helpful to have, you know, your kind of membership, like a place where you can go that's going to hold the space for you and hold the plan and just continually remind you like, okay, it's okay. It's okay. Like we, one step in front of the other. So yeah, the answer is really to assess your bandwidth. And, and to say like, you know, how much energy do you have and, and time and money and just all your resources do you have to put into this? Yeah. And, and that it, it is always about that. It's about assess, assessing your resources and then identifying those things that make the most sense to take on at that particular point in time. So um, I've talked about this before. I was the all in. I'm I'm typically like the, I have the personality of all, the all or nothing. So we go, you know, over the top and I recommend people at ask. I'm like, no, 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 I would not recommend you do that. <laughs> that is not the most recommended. But if it is your personality and that is the way you like to do things, then you go ahead and do that. Yeah. yeah. But just a full well knowing that 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 can lead to burnout and you have to be super careful when you go to do that. Yeah. Um it's but, like the so, oxygen mask, right? It's like it's yeah. like you could tell you could tell me as many times as you want to put my oxygen mask on first. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on my kid first, right? Yeah. And and that's just that's an instinct that we have, right? We so I think what you just said is brilliant that you you know you have to assess your own personality type, but you just have to be aware that the more the more you want to do, the more you you're gonna chew bite off. The, what's the word? The more you're gonna yeah. bite yeah, off bite. <laughs> chew. <laughs> You're going to bite off more than you can chew. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the more of your personal resources it's going to take, it's going to take time, money, and energy, right? Yep. And so if you're very well nourished and you have a lot of, you know, good, strong resources and, and, and you've got a good, strong support system, then you'll be able to do more quicker. Yeah. 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 And, and it's, so it's interesting. It kind of goes back also when you talk about that support system. So the support system can be, everything from the, the, you know, you've got brilliant practitioners that you're working with, or, you know, great team that way it could be, and, or family or friends that support you, a spouse, 
whatever it might be. Um, but that's why, uh, you know, building that support system, or as we call it the village, like you're building your village, um, it becomes so important because that is a resource in and of itself. And um, when you can share your vision, like you talked about with that village, you are going to see that things are going to change a lot faster because um, you're all thinking and doing and envisioning the same end result, um, yeah. which makes a massive difference yeah. in terms of uh, resistance to what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. And if, you're, if your child is old enough and is mm. receptive, you can even share that vision with them, have them create their own vision, go th- mm-hmm. have them go through their process, you go through your process, and then you can share them. Very powerful. Yeah, I think it, I think especially as the kids get older, involving them in that process is essential because the reality is, is that as much as we can um, make these changes for the kids when they're younger, as they become independent, um, you know, I have two teenagers now, so, uh, you know, I see that they have to make their own choices and it, it, it becomes their choices as they, they move, move forward. So if it's Mm -hmm. not part of their vision for who they're going to be, and how they want to live, um, then it's not going to happen. So yeah, um, and you can even take those three buckets, the eating, sleeping and pooping, if they're old enough, and you can mm -hmm. ask them to self assess, you know, how are these things? And, and just know, like, by way of background, they're all interconnected, right? The more you poop, the better you'll sleep and the better you sleep, the better you'll eat and the better you eat, the better you poop and like all of they're all interconnected, it really doesn't matter where you start. Um, but what you can do is ask them, you know, what are their goals? And you can just know in the background, whatever goal they have, it'll be connected to those three things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's so, and, yeah, it's so true. And, and it is interesting when they start to see the click between what they want to accomplish, what it is they're interested in. You can almost, yeah. like you said, you can almost always find a thread in there. Um, in terms of how they, you can help them achieve that goal through yeah. making some of these changes. So. Yeah. And then you can ask them, which one would, would they like to start with? Yeah. Right. Maybe they're, yeah. they're having like terrible sleep and they want to like, they just want to get a handle on that. Maybe they have like terrible cramps and, and they can't poo or whatever it, or they are in diarrhea. Maybe they want to work on that. So little threads that you can pull yeah. out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. I mean, you can always use that same framework that we all do when that you, you know, you're getting your kids to first choose what they want to wear, but you don't want to give them the vast open of what would you like to wear today? You can also give them some set three choices of, of specific things they could do. You know, what do you want to try this? Or do you want to try this? Or do you want to try this? Yeah. It's Uh, so interesting. I've had a few conversations with parents who, you know, the go through this, this, um, this process of, Uh, when you start, when you, you know, you get the diagnosis or you have the the initial struggles or all of a sudden you realize your child's struggling. There's this, there's this phase of like, oh, we got to fix this. Oh my gosh, why is this happening? And there's like tons of energy gets put into, into the under figuring it all out. But then there's often this transition into just understanding your child and working through problems with your child, which is a very different energy to it. A very, and and what, what, what we were just talking about is very much this whole working through a problem with your child. It's a very, you know, it goes from this sort of stressful, like this is tearing the family apart kind of energy to uh, we're going to work through this together and we're going to learn about our bodies together. And we're going it, to, it's this coming together kind of very strong um, attachment based, uh, energy to it. And it's, it's a very interesting transition. I see, I see families going through it, um, often. Yeah. And it's, it it is, if you can, and your child is capable of, and they're of age, it really does make a massive difference, um, in terms of also keeping the family dynamic intact instead of it feel like it's being jammed down their throats, which I know at times, um, sometimes it's necessary. And sometimes though, it just, it just feels that way unnecessarily. So, um, yeah. Yeah. And it, it really does think, tend to be, it, it does tend to be kind of a cyclical process, it is. right? It's not like you, you started at this, at <laughs> this point, you end up at this point. It is, yeah. it is constantly evolving and moving. And if you can, if you can just sort of keep again, a, a good solid framework in place around end vision, then you'll start to recognize the stages of that cyclical process. 
You're like, oh, look, we're here again. Okay, where am I? What's in my toolbox for this? You're like, oh, okay, we're gonna get to here again. Oh, now what? What's in my toolbox here? So that's that's really the my my end game is to bring parents to this point where they they have a, their custom toolbox. They know what's going on in their child. They know their vulnerabilities and their tendencies and their biology and their psychology. <laughs> you know, they know all this stuff about their kid and they have their toolbox and they can pull out the tools that they need when they need them. That's amazing. So this has been a great conversation today. I want to ask you though, one last question, but if there's one thing that you want the parents to do to get started today in terms of uh, moving forward, what would you recommend they start with? Um, right away? Right away. Gosh, I think it's the vision. I think it, here's what I think, and this works for me. So you're going to have to like decide whether this works for you. I always think more clearly when I am walking amidst something natural, trees, rivers, something with nothing in my ears, (laughs) right? Not trying to learn something new, not trying to listen to a podcast, not trying to, you know, sort some things out or talking to someone, I, this is just for me. So when I want some clarity, when I want to sort of some, a fresh start, I, I do that. I go for a walk in the forest. I happen to live near a forest. So it's helpful, but parks will, will be, will work. Um, I find running water completely soothing. So if you can get near a stream or a, or a, or a river and, um, and, and think, and think through and think through that vision and breathe, make sure you're breathing breath, like make this breath is the stuff of, of momentum, right? So breathing deeply and just thinking about what it is that you, that you want to have happen. And often parents will, it it will just get a download, right? They'll just like, it'll start gushing out and be like, this is it. Detach from the how you don't, you don't need to know how you're going to get this. Just articulate what it is that you want. So I think that's, I think that's the first thing is, is go for a walk by yourself with nature, with nothing in your ears and, um, and just, just, just articulate, articulate all of those things. That makes a lot of sense to me. And for those of you that aren't near nature, the shower usually suffices <laughs> the rest of the time. It's so There's a lot right? of really good, sh- there must be the running water. <laughs> it might, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. The warmth, the, the, yeah. um, you know, uh, uh, often people will also do it like as they're lying in bed, mm-hmm. either falling asleep or just upon waking, like just keep a, keep a pad by your, by your bed. Those seems to seem to be those kind of open moments. Um, uh, and, and, you know, I, I'll also put a little plug in for just nourishing your own body too, right? We, we really can't think clearly and we can't be open to possibility when we don't feel good, mm-hmm. right? When we don't feel exactly. good, you just kind of spiral into the, in, into the negative space. So, um, you know, if, if you, if you, if you plan on this, do it on a day when, if, if you know what supplements work for you, or you know what foods work for you, like do it on a day where you're, you're nourishing yourself that day. Cause you'll be, you'll be in a good, a better headspace for, for all of this. It's all makes so much sense, Jess. I mean, and, and it's so timely. So I really appreciate your time today with us. Um, I know you have a podcast coming out soon and I want you to tell people about that and also where they can find you and, and um, look to work with you if they are needing some help in this regard. Yeah. So the podcast is very exciting. It's uh, it's called feeding families and it's part of a, a, a broader network of podcasts that are really aimed at parents who want to live more healthy, sustainable, um, eco-friendly lives and think holistically about how they uh, raise their kids. Uh, so we'll, we'll link to that here. My particular podcast is all about food and feeding. So we are tackling all kinds of topics from um, the nuts and bolts of kids' nutrition right up to, you know, the struggles of actually getting food into their mouths and budget issues and, you know, making choices at the grocery store. Uh, So I'm very excited for some of the experts that, that we have lined up for that. And then my home base uh, for all the other stuff is at jesssherman.com, three S's in a row. 
And there's information on there about my, my common clear kids program, which is really for, for just, you know, getting started making changes. And then my resilience roadmap, which we go deep into all things, biology, psychology, parenting, <laughs> all, all stuff there. That's awesome. And I also, I'll, we'll put a link obviously to, um, to Jess's website in the show notes and also to her great book as well, which, and if you are listening to podcasts, you can scroll back in the feed in terms of the episodes. Um, and you'll also find a, a great episode I did with Jess a while back on her book as well. So awesome. thanks again for your time and your wisdom and, uh, for all the work you do with all the parents out there like us that are struggling with our kids. Um, we really appreciate, uh, that you're there for us. Thank I'm you. happy to be here. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So that's a wrap. Thanks for joining me this week on My Child Will Thrive. I'm so passionate about giving you the tools and information you need to help your child recover. And as they say, it takes a village. So join us in the My Child Will Thrive Village Facebook group, where you can meet like-minded parents and stay up to date on everything we have going on at My Child Will Thrive. This is Tara Hunkin, and I'll catch you on the next podcast or over at mildchildwillthrive.com.